Now, on Tuesday, what else do you remember besides not being able to practice tennis in the morning? A fight between my mother and my brother. No, I just mean an argument, um, a lot of yelling. You know, when my mom goes off, um, she talks about your whole life. She brings everything into it. You born and ruined her dreams and just your tennis had take ruined her life and you're ungrateful and it's spoiled and just it just builds and she works herself into this frenzy where she's just completely out of control and uh, will grab things and throw them and this conversation she was out of control right away and she had been out of that way for since she had gotten back um, very down, angry, cold, and then just these explosions. And uh, at some point, at this point, I was having trying to have a conversation with her because she was in in the den and seemed a little more relaxed. But she just exploded, um, and about something about my hairpiece. When you entered this house from outside, would you be standing in an open area? Yeah, you were standing in the foyer at that point. How did you, how did you come upon this argument? Did they come out of a room? They came you? out of the den, okay. and uh, my mom came out first, and she was yelling, and she was saying, "You don't need it. I don't care. I don't. I don't care what you want. You're not having it." And Lyle was right behind her, saying, "Please, please, I need it. It's not that big a deal. I, it's, it's important to me." Did she do something? Mm -hmm. How long did this discussion, this argument? rage go on? Not very long. Um, about a minute and a half, two minutes. What at, did she do? At some point, uh, she was moving toward me, and I kind of put my arms up because she flails with her fists sort of wildly. And this mom yelling at Lyle, was this a unique experience in your life? No, not at all. And was, how typical was it for your mother to be yelling at Lyle? Uh, she yelled at Lyle all the time. Did she yell at you all the time? Not as much as she yelled at Lyle. No, she was usually very angry when she was dealing with Lyle, but she was really angry a lot that summer. And she reached and she grabbed my hairpiece. And she just uh, ripped it off. He was, he was just saying, I need it. And she finally, she just took a hold of his hair and, and just ripped it off. What did you think at that point? I, did, I, I didn't know what to think. I couldn't believe it. I, I didn't understand at first. And then it hit me. And then I realized. And I, she just pulled off his hair. And, and I knew he had something done to his hair, but I didn't know what. And, and uh, it, within a moment, I realized that it was a hair piece, but I just couldn't believe it. At first, what did you think it was? I thought it was his hair. You yeah, she was ripping off his scalp, basically. Yes. Well, I knew that, that his hair was, was beginning to fall out, and, uh, and I had heard about a, a conversation that he and Mom and him had, I guess. I don't really remember it that well, but I, I know that suddenly he had a full head of hair, and it was always neat. Always perfect, and I didn't quite understand what had happened. Well, didn't that tell you he wore a toupee? I didn't know really much about uh, those sorts of things. I mean, I knew what a toupee was, but I thought it was obvious when you wore one, and I couldn't imagine that my brother was wearing one. But when you saw your mother ripping his hair off, um, did you react? Yeah, I was. I was pretty shocked. I was. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. I. I just couldn't believe it. And how did he react? How did Lyle react? Uh, he just started to cry. And um, had looked. you ever seen him like that? No. It's attached through uh, like a solvent glue. Under the skin? Under the skin. And what happened when she ripped it up? How did it feel? Well, it was, it was pain. Um, because you're supposed to use this blue chemical to detach it. I looked in the mirror, my head was welling up, and that was my eyes had tears in them from the pain more than the embarrassment.
What was embarrassing about this? Just, you know, being there in the house without it and her having ripped it off was just unbelievably embarrassing. And then my, and my brother was there also. He was standing by the doorway when I started going toward her to get the hairpiece back, and she threw it back to me. And uh, my brother was just sort of standing there. Well, she was going upstairs, and uh, I, for some reason she stopped, turned around, and threw it at me. And said, you don't need your fucking hairpiece. And, uh, but I, you know, she threw it at me, so I got it back. Yes, it worried me she was going to take it away. Why? It's just, that's just something my mother would do. Just keep it until my dad got home, which wasn't going to be for a few days. What happened when you noticed your brother was there? Um, nothing. I just looked at him and uh, just really in shock over the whole thing. More my mother's just that she would do that. I never, uh, had never happened before, and she had had rages before close to me hitting me. And so I, I left. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to talk to my brother. So I Why left. Why didn't you want to talk to your brother? Well, he never, he didn't know I had a hairpiece. And so, uh, you know, my brother and I, there are things we don't talk about, and that was one of them. Were you embarrassed in front of your brother? I was completely embarrassed in front of my brother. So what, uh, what did your mother do, if anything, after she threw the hairpiece at Lyle? She ran up the stairs. And what did Lyle do? He, uh, he wouldn't look at me, uh, not that I wanted him to at the time, uh, but he went to the guest house. And what did you do? I eventually went over to the guest house. He came in and said he wanted to talk to me, and I told him. And I'd be out in a few minutes, and I eventually came out. He was Why didn't you let him come in and talk to you while you were putting it back on? Because I was embarrassed. Uh, I was still, you know, I was very uh, basically trembling kind of thing from just the overall embarrassment of the whole thing and the shock of my mother's reaction. Um, so I really didn't want to talk to my brother. Were you angry at her? Um, I was angry, but uh, that was sort of washed over by the whole shock of the whole thing. Now, why did you go over to the guest house at that point? Because I felt really bad for Lyle, and I was feeling pretty bad myself, and I just, just, I'd been wanting to talk to him for two days, and I figured that he couldn't have had a more down moment than that, and so I figured I'd just share the moment with him. You were feeling down for two days? Yeah. Did you think if you talk, oh, did you have in mind what you were going to talk to him about? Not really, just that, you know, I, I understood or I didn't mind that he wore a hairpiece and that I was feeling down too, just, just to talk to him, to comfort him. And when you got to the guest house, did you see your brother? Yes. Where was he? He was in the bathroom fixing his hairpiece. And uh, at some point, did he come out of the bathroom? Yes. Did you start to talk to him? Yes. So did you finish putting your hairpiece on before you talked to your brother? <coughs> yes. And when you came out, did you have a conversation with him? Yes. He wanted to talk to me, and uh, I could tell something was wrong. He was sitting on the sofa, real um, timid, and... Uh, How, what did he look like physically? He started to <coughs> lean forward, did he? Yeah, he was just sitting on the sofa like this. Hunched head, over a little? Yeah, his head was down, and he just... I came in, he kind of looked up at me, and he looked down, and he said, I want to talk to you. And uh, I figured it was about my hairpiece or something, but it seemed like something was wrong, and... Uh, Something was wrong. You heard your brother testify that you talked to him about how you wanted to be close to him? Yes. And is that what you said? Yes. Did the conversation then evolve into talking about something else? Yes. 
I was telling him that, uh, that things in the family didn't seem to be going so well. There seemed to be um, a lot of secrets, um, and that people seemed to be, seemed to be getting apart, and, and that I didn't want that to happen between Lyle and I. And what else did you say? Just that, uh, that I loved him, and, and that I didn't want his relationship and mine to separate. He, he was very sad about the fact that he said we, didn't, we weren't a family because uh, there were so many secrets and that uh, basically saying that, you know, he had never known about my hair piece, which I knew, and that he was sorry that that happened and that he wished he had known and um, I didn't have to be embarrassed. And How did it make you feel when he was trying to comfort you this way? Not good. Embarrassed. Extremely close, and I was more his, the person he, he mostly came to me and uh, when he had problems. And Did you think that having his hairpiece torn off in front of you was a thing that would embarrass him? Yes. Did that enter at all into your decision or desire to go talk to him? Yes. No, I knew he was very embarrassed, and, uh, and I wanted to tell him that there wasn't a reason to be. That it wasn't going to change your relationship? No. He asked, you know, he went on about how we weren't a family and that I was, I was the only person he had. And he asked me to remember back to the time when I confronted my dad about him. And, uh, you know, I remembered. I said yes. And I asked him what was wrong because he was really didn't want to, it, it was like, <laughs> You know, he was basically shaking, and um, I asked him what was the matter, and uh, at some point, he, you know, he couldn't tell me, and he just started crying, and I said, you know, you could tell me, what is it? I, uh, I remember asking him if he remembered a conversation that he had with Dad when he was um, a lot younger, when I was 11. And did he respond? Yeah, uh, he said he didn't know what I was talking about, and I... I asked him several times if he remembered any anything about conversation that he had had with Dad or conversations that he had had with me um, about things that Dad was doing to me, and he said that he didn't know what I was talking about. He told me that those things with his dad were still going on, and uh, I was just completely not believing. And, what did uh, you say to him? I said, what things? He said, you know, you know what things. Finally, I told him. I told okay. him that they were just sexual things. Sexual things? Yes. Uh, this, and I, I said, how come you didn't tell me before? Now, why did you tell him that? Why did you bring that up? Because I was feeling, I was feeling really, really depressed and really down, and I didn't, I didn't know what to do at the time, so I figured I'd tell Lyle and maybe he could help me. Yeah, he was very angry. And who did he appear to be angry at? He was angry at me. He was asking me why I never told him. He was asking me why I never did anything. He asked me if I enjoyed it, if I, if I liked it, if, if I ever fought back. He, he just didn't understand, and he was asking all these questions that were really surprising me. And apart from surprising you, how did the, these angry questions make you feel? They, made, they hurt me, and I was denying them, and I was saying, no, of course not, no, of course not, and I was just trying to make him understand. I, th I said a lot of nasty things to him, basically. What did you say to him? I asked him if he liked it. I asked him why he didn't tell me a long time ago. I asked him uh, why he didn't fight back, because he said that Dad was forcing him. And he was just crying. I had no answers for any of it. Just crying. Were you mean to him? Um, unintentionally. But you were mean? Yes. And uh, that made me... You know, I was... I don't know. If, I was feeling extremely guilty. You know, the 13-year-old conversation, I just sort of let go. And uh, I never really followed up on it. I didn't really want to follow up on it. I was so happy it went that well with my dad. 
and I just kind of let it go. He didn't say that, but I felt like, you know, why didn't I do anything about it? Like what? he was blaming you somehow? Maybe. He wasn't, but I felt that way. Were you way. blaming you? Yes. And uh, also feeling guilty when I asked him if he liked it. And, uh, what did he do when you asked him if he liked it? I was angry. It? What? What did he do when you asked him if he liked it? What did he do? Yes. He said, of course he didn't like it. But he How was, was he, he was crying. And I told him, you know, I believed him. Uh, and I did believe him. What made you believe him? Um, just the way he was talking about it. Just his tears and, um, I mean, it was obvious that it was true. And, uh, and I, I just didn't feel my brother was going to, you know, there was no reason to lie. He sort of changed his tone. I, I could tell he was now just trying to understand where I was, I was coming from. He was asking me who knew. He asked me if mom knew. Okay, and what did you say when he asked you if mom knew? Oh, I told him, of course, mom didn't know. That if she would have known, she didn't know. Ask him why he didn't fight back and everything like that. And then did you, did you talk to him differently about it? Yes, when he, you know, when he started crying, that was very hard for me. And so I sat down with him and told him to relax and let's talk. And uh, I was very shaky myself, just from the, the idea that, you know, my dad was still doing this and. Um, basically uh, trying to think about what we could do. Clearly he was coming to me, wanted me to do something about it. What did you think he wanted you to do? <coughs> Help him, somehow. He was suicidal. Um, and Why do you say he was suicidal? What do you base Just in talks with him over the summer, he was very depressed. My, my dad had been um, extremely rough with him. Um, you know, I saw my dad punch him. I saw my dad be forceful with him over his grades at school, and he was having problems with a chemistry course or something like that. And uh, he was feeling like he was sort of falling apart over the summer, although he, he was having some success at tennis. And when he lost this time and he came back home, I knew how depressed he was. And. Uh, that's so I was, I was concerned for that, and, and then when he was telling me this, I thought part of it was just to tell me, but also to, to want me to do something, because he might kill himself. Did you want to do something to help him? Yes. Did you ask your brother to do anything? You're telling him how badly you feel about this, right? Yes. You're telling him you don't want it to go on? I don't remember if I told him that exactly. Um, I. I'm sure I conveyed it to him because he started talking about how it was not going to happen again and he started to get really, really angry and uh, he was he was really upset and saying that it wasn't going to happen again and I was saying, you know, I didn't know, Dad said it was going to keep happening and I was really worried about it going on when he went away and he said I don't have anything to worry about, that it's not going to happen again. He said that I was going to go to Princeton with him. He said that if I couldn't get into Princeton, that I was just going to live with him over there. He said he was going to talk to Dad. Talk to Dad about what? About the stuff that had happened between Dad and I. He said it was going to stop and that uh, I shouldn't worry about it because it was going to end and he was going to make sure of it. And did he seem confident when he said these things? Yeah, he seemed really optimistic, too optimistic. Did you feel as optimistic as he seemed? No, I, I, I was trying to tell him, you know, Dad's going to be a little bit more upset than you think. Dad's, Dad's not going to be too happy about you telling him this information. I felt I could sit down with Dad when he came back, and essentially, you know, we held all the cards, and if and if I needed to, you know, I could threaten to tell people. Obviously, this is something that would ruin my dad, and uh... But this is a man that you couldn't tell to stay out of what room you lived in, or right. who your girlfriend was, or... How could you, how, how did you think you could tell him this? 
because of what was happening to my brother. At that point, my brother had told me, and he obviously wasn't going to go on with it. He was trying, you know, I felt he was going to maybe try and kill himself or something of that sort, and I told him. You know, I was glad he came to me, obviously. And, and I was still in shock of this whole thing, but I, I felt like I, I was going to talk to my dad. I was going to stand up for my brother. I needed to do something. And, and I really believed that my dad would uh, let him go. My brother seemed relieved, although very nervous, about me talking to my dad. And it you know, started to set in for me that this might not go as well as I hope. But I still felt like, what, else, what could he do? Did you feel an obligation to your brother? I mean, why didn't you just say, I'm really sorry, it's too bad, and I'm headed back to Princeton soon, and I hope it works out? Why didn't you say that to him? And I would never have said that to him, and he would never expect me to say that. Why? Just because we were brothers. He stayed with me in the guest house, and uh, I had a king-size bed, and we slept there. And uh, I sort of stayed up and thought about What did you think life. about? I thought back, and uh, mostly I was trying to not think about my conversation with my dad, and I was just going back and trying to figure out how this could have happened without me knowing for so many years. I basically felt that it could. Why? How could it have happened in the house that you were in for at least a substantial part of the time? You know, I hadn't talked to my brother, and I hadn't really, I really didn't know any details about what happened. And, uh, but I felt that, uh, based on what had happened to me, that I'm sure it had happened in his bedroom, times when I wasn't there. And I felt like, you know, my dad lectured us behind closed doors and, you know, punishments were always behind closed doors. I got beaten behind closed doors. And, you know, at times when cousins were living in the house and I felt like uh, this is something that was going on behind the doors. Were there and, times when you would see your dad in Eric's bedroom? Yes. Would and, you have uh, ever gone in when your dad was in there with no. Eric? Nobody would have gone in. Why? That was just, that was the rule from when we were real little. And I also thought about how my brother sort of, how he could have fought back, just things like that, just wishing that he could have done something. Did you stay up most of the night? Stayed up all night. Were you troubled by this? We were both, the world was, they're gonna be different. I really didn't expect the change. I mean, at that point, I figured my dad knew that I would have to do something about this, and I don't, didn't feel he would hold that against me. And um, I figured my brother's 18 years old. You know, I don't know how long he expected. I, don't, I didn't know why it was going on. Was your dad at home at the time, or was he gone? He was gone. When was he due to come back? On Thursday. You said you stayed up most of the night? All night. And why were you staying awake late at night? <coughs> Just couldn't sleep. No, because of what had happened with Eric and conversation. Just, you know, he was also sleeping there with me. Wednesday morning, or Wednesday during the day, did you uh, spend any more time with your brother? Wednesday morning? Wednesday, Wednesday during the day. Wednesday during the day. Um, we went, we spent the whole, that part of the day together. We went to uh, um, UCLA and went to get something to eat at um, the, Olive, the Olive Garden restaurant there in Westwood, 
and we had lunch. We talked about the, f the future. And, um, what did you talk about about the future? Just keeping spirits up that things are going to work out with Dad and uh, he was going to be with me. Um, it looked like it was going to be Princeton at first and uh, his life was going to change. There had been a conflict way back when I wanted Eric to go to Princeton with me and Dad wouldn't allow that. I wouldn't even let him apply. He didn't want us together. So now we would be together maybe. Do you remember anything occurring the next day on Wednesday? Yes. Do you remember going to lunch with your brother as he testified? Yes. And what was the topic of conversation at that lunch? How I was going to live with him and uh, either he was, he decided that either I was going to go to Princeton with him or he was going to come and live with me at UCLA. And, uh, and he seemed he seemed excited about that. Um, was that a prospect that you relished as well? Yeah. Yeah, I thought that would be great. I was really afraid that if I told him all that was happening that he might not talk to dad and just leave me there and so I didn't want him to get worry about it that dad would, might react badly so I wanted to just tell him that dad might not like what he's going to tell him and uh, I wanted Lao to understand a little bit more but I didn't quite want to tell him. What was it you didn't want to tell him? Was there something your dad had said to you repeatedly? Yes. I didn't want to tell him that uh, Dad said he would kill me if I ever told anyone, and he was serious, and I just thought it might scare him off. Scare who off? Lyle off. And at that time on Tuesday, did you tell your brother any of the details of what the sexual activity between yourself and your father was? No. You didn't tell him about knees or? No. Nice or rough or sex? None of that. At one, I didn't want to scare him off, and two, I just didn't want to, didn't want to tell him about it. Was it easy or difficult for you to admit to your brother that this was going on? It was very hard for me. Were you eager or reluctant to give him any specifics of the kind of things that you and your father had been doing? I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't want to have to go into it with him. I was, uh, it was, he was my brother and I felt really ashamed that I would have to uh, talk about the fact that it was still happening with him. Did you talk to your mom at all that day? I talked to her in the afternoon or early evening. And uh, I wanted to uh, get her to maybe, I was starting to feel, even though we had had this conversation, my brother and I felt optimistic. I just felt like uh, because of my dad's pride, maybe my mom, who seemed to have so much, you know, power in the family right at that point, uh, she could convince him to let Eric go. You know, once I gave, told her what the situation was, um, that she would, I figured she'd be uh, ecstatic to talk to dad and basically uh, get Eric out of the house and and sort of be more rid of us farther away and and possibly uh, f feeling that she could cause a rift between my dad and I with this information, which I didn't think that she could do. But uh, at the very least, she would help me because I, I definitely felt the two of them would talk about it. And um, so I, I went to get her help for that. I remember telling her that, that there were going to be some changes uh, with regards to Eric living in the house, probably, and uh, possibly even going to live with me at Princeton. She wasn't understanding this, and I don't remember the whole con but conversation, but basically um, I said that I had to explain, and I said that Dad was doing things to Eric, that I had found that out. And she 
said, what things? And she got very angry, and I said, sexual things. And she just exploded again, similar to she had Tuesday, and said that basically all I remember is she's saying that Eric's lying and coming toward me and saying, if I want to talk to my dad, I, I mean, if I want to, I don't remember exact words, but basically that I was going to have to deal with my dad. She wasn't going to talk about it, and I couldn't get her to stay and talk about it. And so she left, and I just left. So afterwards, I told my brother I had a conversation with her, and it hadn't gone very well. Did you tell him the details of the conversation? Um, well, not really. I didn't tell him... Uh, I didn't tell him that I had actually told her what was going on between he and my dad. Why didn't you tell him? Just, I just, yeah, you know, I felt it was a big mistake, basically, the conversation. I just felt that my brother would think that it would have been stupid and very upset that now his mother knew. So you and I just, I basically, I didn't want him to be angry with me, so I didn't tell him. <clears throat> Well, I spent the, that whole evening in the, uh, I'm not sure exactly how long, but I spent many hours in the living room um, just preparing notes and taking notes and uh, deciding exactly what I was going to say, writing it out. And my dad's, you know, like I said, he seemed a little bit, uh, he seemed like a very angry person. and at that point in his life, and I was had just great concern that I was going to end up uh, failing in this conversation. I was going to start crying. I had a problem with crying whenever I talked to my dad, uh, not being able to get the words out, and this conversation was so important. And um, so I wrote it out, and I was just trying to, trying to make it shorter and shorter and just get across what I wanted to get across. He was going to tell my mother what I said, and I knew immediately what her reaction would be. You can never let that happen to us. Well, their image was their life. At least that's my, that's how I felt, especially about my mother. And I went back. I immediately, I pretty much, after I thought about the conversation in a few minutes, I went straight to the guest house and waited for Eric, and figured he would uh, be coming home. And did you see Eric later on that night? Yes. Who was the first member of your family that you came in contact with after you went back home? Dad. And where were you when you came in contact with your father? In my bedroom. He was yelling for me to open up the door. Uh, he was saying, open the goddamn door now. Uh, I, I, was, I was terrified. Uh, my heart was pounding, and I, uh, I didn't want to open up the door. From, from Dad's reaction, I thought there had been a talk with Lyle. And uh, could you tell from the way his voice sounded and the pounding whether he was in a good mood, a bad mood, happy, sad? No, he was, he was really upset. Uh, upset meaning? He was yelling. He was furious. It sounded furious. Angry. Angry. 
he was demanding that I open it, I unlock it, and uh, and so I did quietly. Okay. You unlocked the door? I just unlocked the lock uh, and went back to the back of my bedroom. You didn't open the door for him, in other words? No. <clears throat> Why did you do that? Because I wanted to have time to get back in, into the corner of my bedroom. What was the thing he most typically did when he was angry? Uh, he Most typically, he slapped me. And what about pushing your body into objects? Would he do that? Yeah, he'd throw me a lot. Throw you a lot? Yes, he'd throw me into the wall or into the bed or into the desk or into the glass or any place. He once threw you into a glass door, didn't he? Yes. He broke the door? And shattered the glass. And then threw you again? Yeah. So I threw it. Right? Mm-hmm. He was saying that he had, he had told me never to tell Lyle and that he had warned me not to do that and, and now uh, he said that Lyle was going to tell everyone and, and that uh, it was my fault and, and now Lyle was going to tell everyone and he was not going to let that happen. He was angry. He was more angry than I had ever seen him. He was angry. Well, I started saying, no, he's not going to tell anyone, I promise, and he just told me to shut up and, and just rush toward me. Did he come in physical contact with you? Yeah, he grabbed me as I was trying to get over the desk. Okay. You were trying to climb over the desk? Yeah, I was trying to jump over the desk because I, I just wanted to get away from him at that point. And he somehow stopped you from jumping over the desk and did what? Well, he grabbed me and threw me on the bed. Okay. And then did he try to do something to you while on the bed? Yeah, he was grabbing toward me and I was able to just to fling my body away and run out the door. So you got away from him? Yeah. Did you end up uh, in a gun store in San Diego? Yes, we decided we would go ahead and buy shotguns, um, and that we felt that we felt that the if we were going to get attacked, it would be at night, um, more likely, and so we felt we should buy them, and we went ahead and uh, tried to do that. So when the man at the gun store asked for a California driver's license. Did you have one? No. Did Eric have one? No. Did he have someone else's? Yes, he had Donovan's. Was it a big five? Yes. And did you buy two shotguns there? Yes. And what did you use for identification there? He used Donovan's license and uh, signed for it, and we bought him. We got home, and my mother came down right away and uh, told us about the fishing trip. What do you mean told you about the fishing trip? She told us that uh, the time had been changed from uh, some point in the middle of the day to later in the afternoon. I remember the times, and that we were expected to be go on the trip and uh, my brother kind of said something and I said well we don't you know they had mentioned this trip to us before and we had said we weren't going to go and uh, did the time change have any significance for you the time change had a significance um, I didn't really know what the original time was but she was saying it was changed for some reason and also the fact that it was in the middle of the day seems strange to me as a time to go shark fishing 
And I, I didn't believe the whole thing. I thought it, the fishing trip was the way that my dad had designed to, to take care of us. He wanted us along with him. And uh, so my, my, we gave my mom a hard time about it. And she said, well, if you don't want to go, you can go up and talk to your dad. And she was very cold about it. And we, we didn't want to do that. So we just said, oh, we'll go. Just uh, didn't want to have a conversation with my dad after Thursday unless he initiated. No, she was, uh, seemed like she was reporting. It was like she was sent downstairs to tell us it was like a message. Why did she come downstairs? Was, um, because we had come in the door. My mom always spoke as if it was my father speaking. Your father says do this, your father wants this, your father thinks this. So that was the kind of conversation it was. But she was very, uh, she seemed very cold about it. My brother and I talked about the f trip and uh, basically felt that we clearly could not bring shotguns aboard the boat. And uh, we basically didn't know what, what to do. What could we do? So we, we just decided that we would try and be away and sort of be late and miss it. How did you feel about the idea of going on the fishing trip? Was this just something that didn't sound like a good time, or did you view no, it? No, we thought that this was how they were going to kill us, and you know we couldn't be positive, but we were pretty, pretty feeling pretty sure. We wanted to stay in this. He wanted to stay with me in my guest house, and I was so. I told him, "No, that's going to look bad. Um, just stay in your guest house, and let's try to make it seem like." You said stay in your guest house. I mean, you stay in your room, and I'll stay in the guest house. And uh, we'll try to make it seem like there's nothing. You know, we're not that concerned about the fishing trip, and maybe we can find a way to just miss it. In the morning the next day, my brother was just so afraid, thinking that they were going to kill us at any moment, that he was going to die, they're going to kill us. On Thursday night when you were talking to your brother about what might happen, you were talking about the fact that dad would kill you, is that right? Yes. Did you think your mother would stop him? Oh, I thought my mom would do it with him. Uh, there wasn't no one and the other. Why did you think your mother would do it with him? Because that's who my mom was. She was, they were very much of a team, um, besides the fact that my mom hated us, um, they were uh, a team. Uh, do you recall who was on that, that particular charter? Yes, I do. Who was that? Uh, the Menendez family. And uh, who in particular? Uh, Jose and Kitty and Lyle and Eric. Do you see uh, the persons that you've referred to as Lyle and Eric in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. And would you just identify them? Um, in the plaid shirt and the blue shirt. Thank you, Alan. And on both occasions when you were interviewed by Detective Zoller, did you tell him about what you thought was some unusual behavior by the sons on that trip? Uh, yes. What we felt was unusual behavior by we, I'm talking about the crew member and my guest, was that we, um, the um, son stayed at the front of the boat during the charter, during the whole charter, the bow of the boat, and it was a very choppy, wet day. And uh, they, upon leaving Marina Del Rey, we actually took a uh, wave over the front of the boat that um, soaked them. And uh, we were on top of the flybridge, of course, and didn't get wet, and yet we were still cold. And I believe they were wearing shorts and um, we couldn't understand why they were staying up there freezing. So they were not dressed for wet or cold weather I take it? No, no. Did they appear to be uh, comfortable or did they appear to be uncomfortable? They appeared uncomfortable. And did you tell Detective Zoller about that as well? Yes I did. They were, uh, they appeared to be very cold and shivering, and uh, so they were very close to each other and right below us, sitting on the, uh, the bridge of the boat. And their father was at the opposite end of the boat? Yes, he stayed, in the, stayed to the rear of the boat. 
they were very um, actually apart during the trip. The sons were up front. Jose was either in the stern of the boat or down below with Kitty, and uh, there wasn't a there wasn't very much interaction going on. Did it the appear trip. that the boys were trying to stay away from their parents? Um, did uh, during the seven hours that they were on the boat, did uh, you see? Lao Menendez uh, spending time with his father or with his mother? Or would you say the majority of the time was in the front of the boat? The majority of the time Lyle was in the front of the boat. You didn't want to take the boat trip? No. What was your state of mind with respect to taking this boat trip? I was very afraid of going on the boat. We did not want to go on that boat trip. Why didn't you want to go on the boat? Because I wasn't sure what was going to happen on the boat. It seemed real. I was real nervous about it from the conversation the night before. and. Uh, and I couldn't get a handgun like Lyle tried to ask me to. And so I, I was real worried about going on that trip. I thought we might die. And how did you envision yourself dying on the boat trip? I didn't know what would happen. I know that the time was changed to at night. And uh, I wasn't real excited about going on a boat trip with my, my parents at that time at night. Okay. When you got back to the house, though, were your parents still there? Yes. And did you go on the boat trip? Yes. Now, you've heard Mr. Anderson, the captain, testify to what you and your brother were doing and how you looked and what happened to you on the boat trip? Yes. And you've heard your brother testify to it? Yes. And between the two of them, have they given an accurate picture of what happened on the boat trip? Basically. You, you, you need to understand who my parents are and, and how strong they are, especially how quick my dad is. And, and this was a small room and this was a big gun. And I was, it was just, it just flashed through my mind. All kinds of things flashed through my mind. And on Sunday, how was he as compared to those other times? He was much worse. And how did it affect you, if at all, to see your brother, who was less emotional than you, being scared? It scared the hell out of me. I mean, it, it almost made me lose it right there, out of control. But them coming into my room uh, a lot. I mean, I, before, before oh, almost all the times with the sex, I would say to myself, I'm not gonna let this happen, I'm gonna stop it. As soon as he comes into my room, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight him, I'm gonna jump on him. I imagine myself on a ledge, jumping down on him, all kinds of things to stop the sex. And, and whenever he came into the room, I just, I just crumbled and I couldn't do it. No, I know I couldn't. Not when he was right in front of me. You recall testifying here that when your father would get angry with your brother, your brother would get timid? Yes. Do you recall hearing the testimony of various coaches that when your father would be on the attack verbally with your brother, your brother would go frozen? Yes. Did you physically resist? No. Did you think you could? No. Why? Because this was my dad. This was a big guy, and I don't, I don't, I don't know what it was. Um, I mean, it was just my dad, and it, it was just something about it. I couldn't. I mean, I remember in the sex that when he would come into the room, I would want to say, no, I, I don't want to do this. And I would want to say, I don't want you to touch me. And, and I would want to say these things. But I would just see him. He was, like, huge. And he did what he wanted to me. And I couldn't stop that. And I wanted to, but I couldn't. I don't know why. My dad was pounding uh, on the door for me to open it up. And I, I did. I unlocked the lock. And I just went back to the corner of my room. Was he simply pounding or was he yelling and screaming to open up the door? No, he was telling me to open up the door. How was he doing that? He was saying, open up the door, open the goddamn door. Was he mad? 
Yes, he sounded very mad. Now, you indicated your dad is a big, strong man, correct? Yes. Did you think that door was going to come crashing in on you? I don't remember exactly what I was thinking. I was just afraid to open it up. How long had he been yelling and screaming for you to open the door and pounding on your door? How long had that been going on? Ten seconds. So you opened it up pretty quick. Yeah, I wasn't going to wait long. You didn't say no to my dad. Um, whenever my dad came into my room and started yelling or did something like that, I just, I froze up and uh, I, I couldn't, I didn't, I wasn't able to refuse him very easily. I didn't know what my parents were doing in the den, but I thought they were coming out. Which I did think they were coming out at any second, and I had got it done this as fast as possible. I met my brother at the top of the stairs, and I told him, I can't go in my room tonight. I'm not letting him go in my room tonight. And at that point, I said, I got to get to the car. And that's when I ran to the car immediately. It didn't happen this, 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 and this. It happened. Boom. I was thinking they were coming out of that room, and they were going to come any second. And I kept on having this vision when I was in the closet getting my gun that if I ran down the stairs, my dad was going to be at the foyer because he was about to come up to my room. And I was thinking, and it flashed through my mind, I, I can barricade myself in my room. And then I realized I'm not going to be able to do that. I I'm not going to be able to confront him like that. And I just, I just ran down to my car. I was thinking about getting to that room before they left the room because if I met them in the foyer, I thought I was going to die. I, I knew I had to get to that room before they even exited that door. That was, that was the main thing going in my, in my mind. Hurry, i got to get to that room. Because I was thinking they were coming out, I only thought I had seconds. I thought they were, as soon as they came out of the room that I was going to die. I had to get to that room before they came out. They were going to take my gun. Take the gun that you were going in? It, it was this stupidly big thing, and it was just like, it was, I thought they were just going to grab it. I guess I kept moving. I just run into the into the room. I guess I, I guess I kept moving. I, I I don't remember. Was Lyle to your right or to your left? Um he was to my right. He was to my right. And could you tell when you first went through the doors where your parents were? They were in front of us. I just saw this figure which I, I, I think I knew was my dad and he was right there. And did you see another figure besides the figure of your dad? Yes. And what was, where, what was that figure's position when you first came into the room? To my dad's right. Do you know if you lined up directly with that second figure or if you were off to the side? I, I don't know. I don't know. I just walked into the room. I just started firing. And I don't know. I didn't think about these things. I didn't think, where was this, where was that? I just started firing. And I don't know. OK. I just fired as much as I could. Or Every shell I had. What was different about the condition of the room, not the people? I didn't really see the condition of, of the people. I just saw there was a lot of smoke. It was dark. There was light coming in from the from the uh, from the hallway from the TV, and it was real. It was real eerie. The TV was making illuminating lights, and it was it was horrible. I heard a noise from my mom. And what was your reaction to that noise? I just ran out of the room. It scared me. I just wanted to get out of there. Besides the uh, contact wound to the back of your father's head, uh, there was a testimony about uh, your father having a wound to his right shoulder, which fractured his arm. Remember that? Um, no, I don't. And your father also sustained a wound to his right forearm. Do you remember that shot? And a wound to his left elbow, which was back to front, from the rear to the front. Do you remember that shot? Do you remember the shot to his left thigh? The entrance wound would have been to his inside of his thigh and the exit wound on the outside of his thigh. Do you remember that? Your mother had a wound to her right cheek and nose. Do you remember that testimony? And to her right jaw 
and her right collar broke bone and her teeth were broken out. Remember that? She also had a wound to her left ear and neck and left shoulder and to her right arm which fractured her arm and forearm. You remember that? Do you remember shooting your mother in the left side of her chest? No. Do you remember shooting your mother in her left hip and thigh area? No. Mr. Menendez, when you were shooting your mother, did she simply stand in front of you and take all the shots that you were administering to her? <clears throat> My brother, like, didn't move, didn't know what to do, and I, I said, no, you're not going to touch my brother, and we had a big argument. It was actually was just a couple sentences, and but I was saying that he wasn't going to touch Eric, and he was just ignoring me and telling my brother to his face to get upstairs and wait for him, and my brother left and went upstairs. Then my dad came out and took her by the arm and said, come on, Kitty, and they walked into the den, and, and then my dad closed the doors. And I, I realized that uh, they had been waiting for Eric to get home, like I had been. And I just freaked out. I met him at the top of the stairs. He hadn't gone in his room. And I remember f sort of being surprised by the fact that he was at the top of the stairs. And he said something about that he wasn't going to wait for Dad in his room. At some point, I said, I'm going to get my gun. And he said he would get his gun and just it's hard to describe how I felt, but I, like I had to run as fast as I could and uh, my life was sort of slipping away. I just grabbed a bunch of ammunition out of the box and I was giving him ammunition and we were just loading as fast as possible. And, uh, um, my brother got there first and just, we just burst through the doors and uh, I started firing. Was the room lit? No, the lights were out and I just, I remember seeing, I don't remember too well, but I remember sh seeing shadow right off to the right and my brother over to the left, he ran off into that direction and I started firing immediately in the direction of uh, whoever was standing right there. I remember uh, who I realized was my dad at some point uh, sort of coming forward. I remember firing directly at him. <coughs> I believe he fell back. There was things shattering and the noise was phenomenal and um, there were just glass and you could hear things breaking and you could hear the ringing noises from the booms and there was the smoke from the guns and uh, it was basically just chaos. Do you remember firing a very close shot at your father? Um, at what part of his body? I'm um, from the side behind kind of I ended up there I don't remember the shot, really, but I remember the picture. Could see sort of behind my dad, really barely, but could see somebody uh, moving, <coughs> seemed like moving in the direction of where my brother should be. And uh, so I reloaded. What did you do after you reloaded? <laughs> I ran around and shot my mom. Where did you shoot her? I just reached over and I shot her close.
Was that the last shot that was fired? The really only thing I remember very well is somebody coming toward me on the right, more like a, a shadow. And what was the shadow doing to threaten you? Just, he was coming toward me, but that wasn't so much the thing that he was doing to threaten me. It was that I believed that they were in the process of killing us, and that's why I had run in the room. By that point, I had been sprinting around the house and had come in. I felt he was going to kill me. When you went behind the area, when you went in the area behind the sofa and you uh, unintentionally put the gun against your father's head and pulled the trigger, where was your mother? My memory is not good on this, but I think I remember her. Seemed to be around, like around the side of the coffee table. What was she doing? In my mind, she was just sort of sneaking around the side of the coffee table and going in that direction. She had been standing, and now she was in a forward position. You said your mother was sneaking. Is that correct? You just used that term, sneaking. Is that correct? Yes. And did you think that she was going to do something sneaky to you when she was crawling behind the coffee table? No, I thought that we were in danger still. I, I, I know that something about that freaked me out and caused me to run out of the room to the point where I would come back or I would never have. Okay, so something caused you to run out of the room, correct? Right. And this is after you'd shot your father in the head, correct? Right. And so your father was not going to help your mother anymore, correct? I wasn't, I really wasn't thinking that, ma'am. I wasn't, I didn't know what, I wasn't thinking as it was happening. This happened so fast. I was just reacting. It was, it was just, I, was, I remember bursting in the room. I remember some very vague things. And then I remember being over. And I remember dropping my gun barely and slumping against the wall. I, I wasn't thinking each step of the way what I was doing. After you made the 911 call and you came out of the house, do you remember having contact with the police? Um, yes. And the, when I, after I got out of the house? After yes. you got out of the house, right. the police brought you out to the sidewalk area, correct? Well, they ordered us out of the house, and uh, they wouldn't come anywhere near the house. They were too afraid to come near the house, and they were sort of set up in positions, and I remember seeing all these people and having to sort of run out of the house through the gate. So it was your assumption that the police were afraid when you came out of the house, is that correct? Well, that's what I was told when I asked what was, what was going on. So you didn't have any state of mind as to how the police felt when you came out of the house. You just came out of the house and you went to the area between the gate and the street, is that correct? Right. And did you remember having any discussion with your brother while you were out there waiting for the police to go inside the house? I didn't have any discussion. My brother was uh, very hysterical and uh, just crying and may have been screaming also. And then at some point was trying to get back in the house, I believe. But uh, I just remember trying to comfort him, get him to relax and calm down. Um, and I believe some of the officers helping me try and do that.